Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to go back to the ontological argument and look at the reformulation of the theory with a focus on necessary existence. Interesting. Now firstly, if you are unfamiliar with the ontological argument, we suggest you take a look at our video on the subject. The link is in the description. You will need to understand the ontological argument for this video to make sense. Okay, let's begin. The reformulation of the ontological argument was made prominent by philosophers such as Norman Malcolm and Alvin Plantinga. Okay. I'm going to give a brief overview. Great. So if we understand the concept of God to be the greatest possible being that nothing greater can be conceived of, then we must therefore agree that God's existence would either be impossible or necessary. Why? Why must we agree this? Well, consider it. If God did not exist, then it's safe to say he cannot ever come into existence. The greatest possible being cannot be created or caused at some time. If something else created God, this being would be greater and so would contradict our concept of the greatest possible being. So if God does not exist, then he cannot ever exist in any possible world and so his existence is impossible. Yes, I understand. On the other hand, if God does exist, his existence would have to be necessary. If God does exist, he couldn't have come into existence at a certain time for the same reasons as before. So there wouldn't have been a time where God did not exist. Also, he could not cease to exist for nothing can cause the greatest possible being to cease from existence. So we couldn't have a case where God did exist and then stopped existing. Yes. And if you are the greatest possible being, you must exist in every possible world. There cannot be a possible world where you do not exist. Your existence is part of every possible world. Right. So if this is the case, then if God does exist, he must always exist in every possible world. And so his existence is necessary. Right. So either God's existence is impossible or necessary. But I don't see why you should choose necessary existence over impossibility. Well, if we must choose between impossible or necessary, something should only be considered impossible if the concept is somehow self-contradictory or logically absurd. What do you mean? If the existence of something is impossible, it means we cannot conceive of a possible world where such a thing would exist. I can use the example of a squared circle. It's safe to say the existence of a squared circle is impossible, and the reason being is that it is a self-contradiction. By definition, a circle is not squared and a square is not circular. So I can agree there is no possible world where there exists a squared circle. But can the same be said for God? Is God's existence a logical absurdity or a self-contradiction? Most would argue that that is not really the case. And so if there is no contradiction in imagining the existence of God in any possible world, it then means God's existence is not impossible. I see. And so now we can take the further steps to prove the existence of God. If God's existence is not impossible, then we can say there exists a possible world where he exists. Therefore, we have this one possible world where the greatest possible being exists. If there is even one world where the greatest possible being exists, it means he would have to exist in every possible world, including our own, because the greatest possible being must have necessary existence. There cannot be a possible world where this being does not exist as it would cease to be the greatest possible being. And so if God's existence is not impossible, it means we can conceive of a possible world where he exists. If we can conceive of a possible world where he exists, it means he exists in every possible world as he has necessary existence. And so this reformulation of the ontological argument goes the distance in proving the existence of God. Very interesting. This version of the ontological argument sure does sound convincing. However, there are still many problems with this theory. What problems? The reformulation of the ontological argument has only demonstrated that the existence of the greatest possible being can be possible, but the same logic can be used to show that the existence of a perfect being is impossible. 
I would like to raise Peter Van Invagen's concept of a no-no. A no-no is a being who knows there is no perfect being. So a being that somehow knows there is no God. Now, there is no reason to believe that the existence of a no-no is intrinsically impossible. It is not a self-contradiction or a logical absurdity. If then we accept that a no-no is not intrinsically impossible, then we must also accept that there is a possible world where a no-no exists. Okay. If there is a possible world where a no-no exists, then this means in that possible world there does not exist a perfect being. Yet a perfect being has to have necessary existence, and so should exist in every possible world. If it lacks existence in one possible world, it does not have necessary existence, and so it is not a perfect being. If we then accept the existence of a no-no, we must accept that the existence of a perfect being is impossible. And if we accept the existence of a perfect being, we must accept the impossibility of a no-no. Hmm... As we can see, there is no reason to accept the existence of either a perfect being or a no-no. The problem is that only one can exist, and so we have no good reason to accept one over the other. It is because of this I shall argue that the reformulation of the ontological argument is unsuccessful in proving the existence of a perfect being. Good point. Well, that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what are your thoughts? Is there any version of the ontological argument that goes the distance in proving the existence of God? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.